Hi, welcome back. In this video, I'm going to show you how to use some of the uh, website stuff that we're going to be using throughout at least the first part of this year. We're going to see how to get into a Google Meet, which will be a little bit different than it was last year. And we'll also look at the website that is attached to the curriculum that we're going to use so that um, you can get a, a feel for what that's going to look like as well. So first of all, to get into a Google Meet. Last year, I know that personally, I just posted the link and people clicked the link and it took them there. This year, we have to do it a little bit differently. And this will be the same for all of your classes. The first thing we're going to do is we're going to go to meet.google.com. When we get here, there's one thing that you really, really need to uh, make sure of. And that is if I enter my code or my link, or I think we call it a nickname right down here at this very moment, it's not going to pull anything up. And that's because I am not logged in using my school account right now. I come up here, I have J, that's uh, for my first name, John. Sometimes it's pronounced danger. And I can go and I switch to my my school account, it looks a little bit different. Now this might not look exactly like what yours looks like because you don't have the option to start a meeting. But when you click on there, we have, hey, we can enter our nickname. The nickname for all of my things, anytime you're going to need to get a hold of me, whether it is a scheduled class time, whether it's Wednesday office hours, if it's um, another scheduled appointment, however it is, it will always be Swanson Math. And then we can continue. And that will allow us to join the meeting. Now, I actually have to be on this meeting um, before you can join. If I'm not there yet, it will give us a an error. But hey, look, I'm here. It's almost like I planned this. So we can join now. And here we go, we're in the meeting. So that's how we log into the Google Meets these days. It's going to be go to meets.google.com and then enter the nickname. That's going to change from teacher to teacher, but the process is going to be the same. All right, so the next thing we're going to look at is how to access the site where your textbook is located. This is also where you will be taking quizzes, you'll find your study plan, uh, and you'll be doing your assignments through this site. I wish that it would all tie into the Google Classroom, but this program doesn't tie into that. So you're gonna have to go to both. Um, I will have assignments posted in the Google Classroom telling you what you have to do. So you won't have to just remember to go here, um, but you will have to go here. So the URL that we're going to go to is my math lab for school com. You'll probably end up wanting to have a shortcut for that because you'll be going to it a lot. Um, in the beginning, you'll register as a student. I'll have a document posted for you on that because it'll have the class code on it and each person gets their individualized um, access code. And so it'll walk you through that. It's a pretty easy setup. Um, you create you put in the course, you create your account, and then you put in the access code as opposed to buying it. You don't have to buy it. I have an access code for you. Um, so, but then you'll just sign in. So we're going to sign in. And then I'm signing in as a student here. I'm a student in my own classes. That way we can see what it's going to look like when you sign in, because when you sign in, when I sign in, they look very different. So you're only going to have one class here. You're going to have pre-calculus. I have the others because I need to do this for my other classes as well. So we're going to click on pre-calculus to open up the class. This usually runs faster. About 10 minutes ago, my internet decided it wasn't going to be fast at all. So it's a little bit slow, but it just means you get to listen to me 
talking while we're waiting for things to load. So as we're waiting for this home page to load, oh, there we go. Um, it's going to pull up a calendar of two weeks. This will have things like assignments and stuff in it so you can see what things are. Your quizzes are going to be here. And so those will be very specific, very specific um, times and dates. Um, and you'll also have your assignments, which might be here for a certain day. Um, but remember, you do have until Wednesday to get those done. Um, right here, we see we already have something. And that's an announcement. This is one that's auto-generated by the system. It's right down here. It's like, oh, it's a welcome. Run a browser check. Learn how to enter answers using things. OK. Um, then we have also little assignments down here as well um, where it'll list them out. Um, if we go over here to assignments, guess what that'll do? It'll pop up your assignments eventually. There they are. We already have a couple right here. We have the study plan for orientation. I've actually assigned that to you. Um, it's not I'd say it's not points for like accuracy on this one, but this one doesn't actually have you do any math. It's specifically how do you enter stuff. And so it'll have you like plot a line through these two points. And I mean, there's no math. It's just using the tools. And then there's a quiz for it. We could actually click on this right now and it'll pull it up. It's like, oh, we can start the test. It tells us, oh, we have seven questions, um, attempts. This one's unlimited. Usually on a quiz, you get one attempt, but this one isn't a quiz quiz. It's just something to get used to the system. And then you can start the test. But it's nice. It tells you how many questions there are and such so that you can be like, oh, it's seven questions. I only have like 10 minutes. Maybe I'm not going to start it right now. I'll wait till afterwards. Um, we'll cancel that. Um, the next tab down is a study plan. And this is one of the coolest features on uh, this because what it does is it takes every chapter broken into every section and then it takes each objective from there. So the orientation, this is one that you're already going to do. I've already done this one. I wanted to see what it did when I did it. Um, and then we have our prerequisite chapter. That's what we're going to be starting with. And then chapter one, chapter two, on each of these, we can see this one, it's going to have seven. This one has eight, eight, nine, six, six, four. A lot of times when we get going, it's going to be about five. Um, I say that and then a bunch of them are more than that. Regardless, let's open up prerequisite one. It'll pull up all the objectives in this first section of this P chapter. These are the things we're doing. Each of them gives you a chance to practice and then a chance to do a quiz on those. Now, you don't actually have to practice first. If it's something that you already know, maybe you practiced in your homework and you're like, you know what, I think I've got this. I'm going to take the quiz. Um, if you get the questions all right in the quiz, it'll give you a mastery point. If you don't get the questions all right, this is the one where you can just do it again and again and again until you can get it right. Um, maybe you practice if you're really struggling on something, you practice. If it's something where it was entered wrong, you might not need to practice again, but you can take the quiz. Every mastery point you earn gives you an extra credit point. So this P1, we have a chance of five extra credit points. Um, because I think that these are very, very valuable. Um, it's going to help. Maybe you do them as we're going through. Maybe you do it when we're reviewing for the test at the end of the chapter. I don't know. But at the end of the chapter, I'll look through. And it's like, oh, you had 17 mastery points this chapter. I'll give you an extra 17 points because I think that it's going to be hugely beneficial to do it. And so basically the extra credit points are just blatant bribery for you to succeed. Uh, if we go down to the next one, gradebook, guess what this is going to be? Yep, it's going to be a gradebook. Now, this isn't the gradebook that your grade is on. That's still going to be in Skyward. 
um, or Google Classroom. But here you can see it'll list everything out nicely. Um, and so you can just see what it's like. Um, but your grade here and your grade in the class might not be identical. Um, the next one is the e-text. This is a textbook. Um, and it's going to pull it up. You open it. It'll open up in a new window. And that will give you the entire textbook. Um, we can also go down to the next one, chapter contents, and we can pick a chapter. So like this is just the entry stuff, um, but we can pick, say, chapter P, section one. And it doesn't matter what chapter and section you pick. It always comes up with the same things except for this one. Usually there's a video. The preliminary chapter, there's no video because it's all review. Um, but usually there's a video for the section. This is in addition to any video that I make for you. It'll give you a new, a different take on the lesson. Um, you don't have to watch it, but if you're struggling with the lesson, watching it, hearing somebody else explain it could be very valuable. Um, view the e-text. This will pull up this section, so it won't pull up everything. And then work in your study plan. That just takes you to the study plan that we already saw. Um, back to the main menu. So that was the chapter content, Tools for Success. This one has some good stuff. So we have some like support stuff right at the beginning, like how do you enter answers, things like that. Um, review, there's practice workbook for additional practice. The study guide um, for answers. Um, more videos. It's just new link for the same videos. Glossary, um, some calculator tutorials, and then activities and projects. Um, we'll get to these through the text as well. Um, these are some of the things that we'll probably be doing in our Google Meets, um, extending the ideas, doing the explorations, the projects, things like that. Um, and I'm, I'm really looking forward to doing those. Um, the multimedia library. So the multimedia library is where we get all sorts of stuff. So we can select our chapters. Let's go chapter one. The P chapter might not have much. Um, I'm going to leave it as all sections. And now a lot of times from here I click find now and it shows me that, oh, you we can't find anything. That's because I haven't selected anything for it to find. So let's select all. See what it can find us for chapter one. And so. We have, we have a couple animations. Those are kind of fun. Um, I'm not going to open them because my internet's being slow and it'll just take forever. Um, we have the textbook for each of our sections. So this is just another way of getting to the textbook. And we have some video lectures for some of our sections as well. Um, looks like section one, functions and their properties. Section two, building functions would be section four and modeling with functions would be section seven. Um, they don't have the videos for these other couple um, because, well, I mean, chapter one is still mostly review. When it gets more into the book, they do have more for a lot of other things. Um, and then they'll also add in some essential videos when they have them. Those are like extra videos that help with specific topics. Um, the accessible resources. Um, this gives you a couple other things. Um, it'll give you a textbook that will work with screen readers. So if you struggle with reading and such, you can do that. Uh, discussions. Um, the discussions we won't use so much on here. Any of the discussions we have will most likely be through Google Classroom. And then course tools, all that pulls up is email and um, uploading files, which we can again do through Google Classroom. Um, so we probably won't be using these bottom few at all. But the really important ones, we have our assignments, we have our study plan, and then the textbook. So I look forward to using this. I haven't used this program before, so we might find some stuff that really works well for us. We might find some stuff that doesn't work all that well, at least in the situation that we're in. Um, but I'm excited to try it. I'm excited to play around with it. And I think that this is a really cool website that gives us all sorts of 
material, all sorts of help that will help us through this year. And even when we're back in the classroom, this will be an amazing tool to be working with. So that's the extent of the websites that we're looking at today. Um, I'll see you in class. Until then, keep asking questions, keep working problems, and as always, happy mathing.